Hello, this is Francis from McCaffrey Crafts, and today I thought I'd give you guys a, a little chat about uh, about a, a customer I was dealing with. I thought it might be be entertaining to uh, to, to kind of mention it, uh, and it's that time of the day where I kind of sit down, have my cup of tea, and uh, today, unfortunately, there's no no biscuits left. I think the kids got to them before I did, so uh, just a cup of tea without without a biscuit again today. Um, just to update you how I was doing today, I spent most of the morning uh, straightening sticks. Um, usually on Fridays after the courier comes, I spend most of the day straightening sticks. And then on Saturday and Sunday, then I'm carving handles and making my new new batch of sticks. I have about 10 uh, sticks straightened this morning. You can see over here, just in the kitchen, I'm just kind of straightening wherever I can. So I have these little apparatuses that I can kind of use when I'm at home or if it's raining or something outside, I, I can go outside and straighten as well and I have another place. But uh, so Friday is usually my day when I'm I'm doing a lot of straightening of, uh, of sticks and uh, I probably get back into cutting again, maybe next Tuesday or, or Thursday, just depending on how the weather is. And uh, cutting season's not going too bad, still behind in what, what I'd like to get. So um, I, I'll have to probably... Uh, you know, think of uh, how I'm going to, to manage now the, the rest of the cutting season because you only really have until March the 30th because after March the 30th, you're not um, you're not allowed to cut anymore. There's, there's rules and regulations on hedge cutting. And uh, so if you're cutting after the, the 1st of March, you can, you know, yeah, I, I'm sorry, the, uh, the end of March, you can get into a, to a spot or bother. So you need to do all your cutting by March time. So anyway, look, today I thought I'd tell you a story about a customer that I had and... Um, just to give you a bit of bit of background, um, about maybe eight nine weeks ago, um, someone bought one of the short shillelaghs. You know the little batters; they're about like eighteen twenty inches long. I think this one was about twenty inch long, and so they ordered this batter. It was shipped to them by courier. They signed that they collected it with the courier. There was proof of us um, that the the item was delivered, and they had the item fine. They had it for Christmas, they had it everything. Then about eight, nine weeks later, about a day or two ago, um, I got an email message from the customer and they said to me, um, hello Francis, uh, send me a shipping label now. I want to ship the item back, you know, and they were complaining about how can they use that as a walking cane is too short. Now, in my listings, I put quite clearly, this is a walking cane. This is 20 inches long. I mentioned it several times in a listing. So it's just a simple matter of the person, she, you know, well, you know, I don't know, it's a simple matter. Like, you, you'd, <laughs> I don't know how someone could order a one foot, eight inch stick, thinking it's a, a walking stick, then receiving it, receiving the package, signing the package, seeing how short the package was keeping it for nine weeks, then after nine weeks, sending me a message saying they wanted me to pay to get it couriered back from the USA to, to Ireland. Now, I know like with with clothes and women's clothes and stuff like that, they do this thing where they give you like an address label to send something back if you try on an item of clothing and stuff. But like, you know, when you're ordering something from halfway around the world and I'm a one man business, I'm not like a big, big company. It's, you know, I can give you, a f if you can return the item, I'll give you like a full refund and stuff, but I I, I can't be shipping the, uh, you know, sending out return labels and doing double shipping where I courier it to you once and I have to courier with it back again. You know, it's, it's just very, very difficult to do that. So she wanted to courier it back and uh, I explained to her that, look, you send it back you know, you can you can get your your refund, but even though it's outside the uh, you know the, the the usual thirty days and stuff like that, and uh, she wasn't happy, and she went on this. She wrote me a novel telling me how shameful I am, how a bad person I am, how everything about me is is bad, and uh, you know, she started calling me shameful and my craft and how I'm trying to rip people off and stuff, and I, I was just like what you know it was almost like you know i don't know if you're familiar with the the kind of what they call online a karen a karen is this like lady who's you know very accusatory of you giving out to you you know those kind of customers you see um you know they're, they're just complaining for the sake of complaining so like it seems she just wanted her money back or something after two months and you know they had she had she had the like batter for two months and stuff so i, I don't know what was going on but like 
she's been very unreasonable and very, very rude. So I kind of just basically said to her, look, you know, I don't tolerate rudeness. Don't be calling me shameful. Don't be insulting my crap. I said, take a day to calm down, email me tomorrow, and together we'll find a solution that works for both of us. You know, and I was, I was like, you know, like that. But then the kind of funny thing came where she just kind of lost it. And uh, she sent me this this very hateful uh, message. And she told me to, to shove the stick up my ass. And, you know, I haven't been told that before. Like I've been, I've, many things have been said to me over the years, but it's the first time now, uh, you know, a, a disgruntled customer has told me to, to shove a shillelagh up my ass. And uh, I think that'll be the title of this video um, as well. So I just thought it'd be like interesting to kind of just share you just uh, one of one of those kind of stories. Um, you know, like it's it's it, in this business, you're dealing with all, all sorts of people you've had. Like I've already, someone's already threatened to beat me up once this year to call down to my house for 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 some childish reason. Then, you know, last year I had two people who wanted to come down and give out to me because I wouldn't do this for them or I wouldn't do that for them. So it's like a it's a very unusual game, this this kind of stick making. You meet meet all sorts, but this is the first time a customer has 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 told me to to shove a walking stick up up my up my butt. <laughs> so that's I don't know. I just thought it was kind of funny and stuff. Like I was like I was perfectly willing to, to, to do the refund as well. Um, it's just that if you're coming on to a seller and you want a refund or something wrong, just there's no there's no point being rude. Like, you know, sellers are understanding. Like if she sends a stick back, I'll just resell it. It's not a big deal. Like, um, you know, if, so, if a stick is the wrong size, you send it back. I'll give you your money back and uh, I'll just resell it. Like that's, it's as simple as that. But coming on, just, you know, being rudeness gets you nowhere. And like, you know, just because you're, you're a seller of sticks doesn't mean you have to put up with it. Like, you know, th there's this kind of misconception out there that if someone's been rude to you in customer service, you just have to bow your head and accept it and accept it. And you see this all the time. Like you see it at the airport when, people, when we had airports, people screaming and shouting at each other. And you always feel sorry for that, that, that usually that girl at the, uh, the, the desk that had to, to all the customers shouting and screaming at them and directing their anger. But like, you know, if you want, want a refund, <laughs> if there's a fault with the item, if it's a legal obligation, you, you have to give them a full refund. Um, if they order the wrong size, they have 30 days to ship it back. Like it doesn't, like once you ship it back within the 30 days, it doesn't have to, if it takes after the 30 days to get it back for the seller, that's fine because you'll have your proof of, of shipping it as well. <clears throat> so, you know, you have a lot of rights. You don't have to worry. There's no, there's no point having some argument or something like that. Like I sell, I sell a lot of sticks, you know, it, it's you know, one stick here and there like, you know, it's very rare that I have to do refunds. So it's not a big deal. It makes no difference. But like, you know, when, when this one's coming on and giving out to me and, and shouting and calling me shameful and, you know, saying how a horrible person I am just because she ordered a 20, inch a 20 inch stick when she wanted apparently a, a 37 inch. So my kind of like take on it was, you know, I could have just agreed to her, give her everything she wanted and be, you know, at a loss for, you know, getting it courier or back. But sometimes in life, you just have to kind of stand up for your craft, stand up for yourself as a seller and say, look, you know, if you're looking for a refund, you, you, there's no need to be rude. Um, you know, I, like, I, I think what really set her off was I told her to take a day to, to, to calm down, you know, and I don't think anyone had kind of said something like that to her. Maybe in life, someone need to, to, needed to, uh, to, to tell her to calm down as well. And, uh, oh my God, I had another one before Christmas about socks. Oh my God. Like for some reason, I had to take the socks off the website because the ladies, always ladies, I don't know why, um, who were buying the socks, they were weird. Like they were, you know, they would have meltdowns. They'd be giving out. They'd be like, you know, like if, like the, the, the problem with the socks was, um, um, it took too long to deliver. Like they ordered them and it took five or six weeks with the post at the time because over the Christmas it was terrible post. And uh, they come on again. It's the same the same type of strategy. They come on accusing you as a seller, like it's your fault. Like, you know, if there's a problem with the shipping, it's a third party. Like, you know, the, the seller will try to assist you, you know, raise a complaint, contact their account manager. You know, that that's all they can do. But like, whenever they come on accusing you and calling you this and that, that's the worst approach ever. Like, you know, in, in dealing with, 
with customer service. Like, you know, they're not, they're not going, you know, then they're going to stick to the letter of the law and the rules and things like that. So you just, you know, niceness goes a long way. If you're not happy with something, talk to the people. Like, we're all people. At the end of the day, you talk to me, I talk to you. We we work these things out. But uh, I just thought it was funny, like, uh, you know, how she was completely losing it and, you know, telling me all these things and then saying to, 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 you know, shove it up my bum and all this kind of stuff. So anyway, I uh, just thought that, that's what was in my mind today for, for one of these cup of tea talks that uh, just dealing with a few people like that. I have a few uh, more requests that uh, have built up now that I have to try to, to, to work on and different things like that. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching today. That was today's uh, cup of tea talk.